Okay, so the other types of variables that I mentioned here, such as water and sunlight, are called extraneous variables. And they're basically any other variable that exists outside of those two variables that could affect your study. So we, we're basically trying to control for as many of those variables that we know can affect that. So for sure, like water and sunlight are gonna affect plant growth. So we're gonna keep those as similar as possible across all the different conditions of soil. So remember that our two main variables are plant growth and soil type. And so extraneous variables are all the other variables that could affect the relationship between plant growth and soil that are not plant growth and soil. So the things I mentioned before, such as water or sunlight, those could definitely affect our study and kind of throw us off and make us think that maybe one soil is better than the other, but when really the plant just got more sunlight. Uh, and so we're more sure uh, when, we, when we have control over those extraneous variables and we make them the same, again, we're making sure that we know that the actual soil is causing the difference in the, in the plant growth and not anything else. So let's take a, a couple of different examples. One more example uh, that's a little bit more uh, psychology related. So if we have an independent variable of caffeine uh, and our dependent variable is the number of words recalled, we're really asking about how does caffeine influence our memory? Uh, and so in this experiment, I would give some of my participants a Coca-Cola that has caffeine in it, and I'll give other participants a 7-Up that doesn't have any caffeine. And so our Coca-Cola condition with the caffeine, that's known as our experimental group, right? Because this is where they're actually getting a dose of the thing that we think is affecting our memory. And the control group is the 7-Up group where they're not getting any caffeine. So this is our kind of control baseline. Um, making sure that basically are we, is this caffeine affecting our memory in some way, whether it's higher or lower. Now, other variables that we might control for here are things like the time of day that you do the experiment, right? So if you are doing the experiment early in the morning, maybe people coming into the experiment um, are really, you know, wide awake or, you know, maybe very tired if you're doing it too early, right? And so that could actually affect that word recall if you're having participants do it at different times of day. Maybe you're not sure if it's the caffeine or the time of day that's causing them to have different word recall. Other things to consider are things like if they've already consumed tea or coffee. So you definitely don't want anybody in your control condition to have already drank three cups of coffee before they got to your experiment. Uh, and another one is noise. So you know if you have some participants doing this word recall task in a very noisy environment and others doing it in a very quiet, secure, kind of cozy environment, then again, you're not really sure. Is it the noise or is it the caffeine that's making the difference in the word recall? And so what we want to try to do is actually just make all of those other extraneous variables controlled for by keeping them all the same across all the conditions. So whether you're taking Coca-Cola or a 7-Up, we're going to do the experiment at the same time of day. We're going to ask you not to drink any caffeinated drinks for the previous 12 hours before you came to the experiment. Uh, and we're always going to put you in a quiet room. And then that, again, makes us more sure that the caffeine is causing the change in the memory and not anything else.